Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'll be editing a photo and talking specifically about a tool that's used for editing color that I think gets overlooked in favor of other flashier or sexier or you know more impactful tools. But this tool is incredibly powerful. I use it all the time and in certain situations it might be the only color tool that I use because it can do so much. We're going to cover that in this video and I want to talk about why this tool is so significant even though I think it's often overlooked but first if you aren't aware check this out there's a huge all-in-one photography bundle that Skylum team is making available it runs for a few more days but it's got tons of creative assets like skies and LUTs and presets and it's got lots of video tutorials from amazing and fantastic photographers from around the world check it out if you'd like to there is a link down below that is an affiliate link so they pay me a referral commission if you use it and that's a free way for you to support me and all the stuff that I provide here today and speaking of today uh, this is what I'm working on now this is a photo that started like I need to activate Illuminar first uh, there we go that's what it looked like before I did anything and that's what it looks like now all I did is erase a couple of things from the sky and I used develop raw to fix a little bit of distortion and massage the contrast and the light a little bit but I want to be clear I did nothing to color, didn't touch saturation or vibrance, did not touch temperature or tint, and I went uh, from that to that. And here's what I want to talk about. You get a sunset like this, and it's incredibly tempting to come in with things like maybe Accent AI and say, ooh, let me just move that and get that going. And you know, you, you start going, and you might notice that things like these oranges in the sky just get really kind of blobby uh, really quickly. So I don't think that's a good way to start. Another tool that you might want to use is come in and hit it with golden hour because you're like, look at all those warm tones. I really just want to bring them up. And when you do, you'll see, again, you get this big orange kind of super intensely colored blob there. And that's at 29, which isn't really a ton. Even uh, like at 15 or 16, I think you're still, if you look at the before and the after, you, you're losing a lot of the texture that's in those clouds. And I, for one, I want to keep that there. Other tools you might use might be toning. And to be honest, I use these tools all the time and I love them and they're great, but they don't always fit the photo. In this case, you start dragging the saturation for the highlights. And again, you get that orangey kind of blob, you lose the texture of the clouds, and that brings you to color harmony. You might say, ooh, brilliance and warmth, you know, already just way over the top. And that's at 17. If I bump up the warmth a little bit, just the yellows are getting out of, out of whack. And if you split color warmth, another fave of mine, really quickly, it's just getting out of whack. And so I just, I want to talk about using a simple, overlooked, but incredibly powerful tool that I think is incredibly significant and well worth spending your time on, and that's color. So first, I'm just going to delete all these tools because I did not use them, but I want to make sure that you see that I did not use them. And I'm left with just what I did in Develop Raw and the Erase tool. And so I want to jump into color and show you why and how to use this and why it's so important. Now, the first thing I said uh, at the beginning of this video was I did not use saturation or vibrance in Develop Raw. And honestly, I almost never use saturation there. It's very rare. And often I will use vibrance, but really small, like five or something, just something that's maybe not even noticeable. But in this image, I didn't use it at all because it's already got so much color and there are better tools than just saturation and vibrance or temperature and tint in Develop Raw to ma uh, massage and adjust these colors. And especially when they're already this intense, I think you want to be careful. And this is where color, and specifically, we're going to dive into this HSL section. That's where this comes in so handy. So if I hit this with saturation, I get the same problem I got with the other tools. And that's because saturation is global. And yes, I can mask it in. But what I'm trying to do is just get a little bit more intensity in that sky and the color. And saturation is not going to do it because it's just like a it's, it's just a over the top kind of look here. So I'm taking that down. Now vibrance, vibrance looks okay, but it's getting a little bit too intense. So I'm going to take that out as well. And like I said, I really want to focus here in HSL. Now, if you just look at the image, you'll notice that there are some colors that are just more intense than, than others and more present than others. There's a fair amount of yellow. There's a fair amount of orange. And you could probably tell there's a fair amount of kind of pinkish red, which is really going to fall in the red here in the uh, HSL tool. There's also a fair amount of blue. And so what I want to do is kind of work with those colors so that I can get a nice and impactful looking sunset without it going over the top 
because it's already really intense. So in this case, what I want to do is if I start to increase the saturation of the reds, you're going to see those oranges again over the top. Same thing for orange. If I drag that to the right and increase that saturation, again, it's just over the top. And so what I want to do, I'm actually going to reduce the saturation of these two. I'm going to bring them down like a five or six, just something kind of minor. I don't want to do too much because I like those colors and I want them in the sunset. And I love the variants, like the pinkish red, the orange and the yellow all being in one image. I love that. And in particular, I also love the contrast of all those colors with the blue in the sky behind it. We're going to play that up. Now, yellow, you're going to see that more along the horizon here. And in this case, I'm actually going to bump the saturation of the yellow up slightly, maybe something about like that. And I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm also going to take the saturation of the blue and bring that a little higher as well, about a 15 or so. So if I take a look at the overall look so far, there it is before. And there it is now. I don't know if you can tell, but I think that the clouds over here, they look really good without being overdone. Speaking of done or not done, I want to do now a little bit with luminance. And this is another thing that makes this tool so powerful because uh, having these individual color channels and being able to in, uh, control the saturation, the luminance, but also the hue, which is the H in HSL. And I'm not playing with hue here, but it lets you change kind of the shade of that color. But in this case, saturation and luminance of the different colors really gives you a lot of power and control over the outcome of this photo. So now you may remember we took the red and the orange and we reduced the saturation. But what I'm going to do is actually increase the luminance. In other words, I'm going to brighten these two colors a little bit. And again, I'm making pretty minor moves here simply because there's so much color and I want to be careful not to overdo it. And also, I don't want to create that kind of orange blob in those clouds. I want to maintain a little bit of that texture there because I think, I think it's an interesting aspect of this image. Now, the yellow luminance, I'm actually not going to play with. I could pull that down if I wanted to, and I think that looks okay to a point. But, um, you know, maybe I'll actually bring it down just a little bit, maybe like a 10 or something like that. But the other thing I'm going to do is control this blue. Now, when I take the luminance or the brightness value of the blue down, there's a lot of blue in that left-hand side in that upper left corner. There's some over there, and then there's a bunch in that lower left corner as well. So when I start reducing this, you'll see what's happening is it's creating more color contrast in the image. So because it's darker, the bright oranges over here, especially over here right next to that dark part of the clouds uh, or dark part of the blue sky, that orange is standing out more. So that uh, reduction in blue luminance is actually giving better, I think, overall look to this orange in the cloud that's basically next to it and in front of it. So if you look at the before, and this luminance and blue is a big move here, but if you look at the before, and the after, I think that does a really incredible job of popping that bit of color over there. And I think that looks really good. So if you look at the before, overall, there it is overall. And after, I think our colors look much better overall. And now, if you want to go into some of those other color tools, I might would go up here to Color Harmony. And maybe I'd go to Split Color Warmth. And I would do just, uh, honestly, a tiny, tiny bit. So like a three or four maybe here on warm just to give it a little bit because again i'm trying to avoid making a over the top uh kind of super color blob for like i don't know what to call it other than making that cloud too much of a big orange or yellow blob but maybe something like that and then i might cool off some of the blues a little bit more something about like that so it's a pretty minor move but there it is before and there it is after and i think those oranges in that cloud are still nice and vibrant and intense but I haven't gone over the top and I've still got a fair amount of texture there that I'm not losing control of, which I like. Another tool that can be interesting on a photo like this is in landscape. And if you think I'm going to golden hour, wrong. I'm not going to golden hour because I think golden hour here would just be too much. There's already so much gold and you can see, I mean, I'm at 14 and I'm getting that blob that I'm talking about. I don't want that, but I am talking about dehaze. Dehaze does a really interesting thing to a lot of photos. So if I drag it too much, I'll get really intense color and it creates higher color contrast. So you'll see those oranges really get out of control. But I could use this at a pretty low amount, like sub, you know, below 10 or below, maybe even like a six or seven. And it gives it a little bit of extra pop. So there it is before and after it creates a little bit more of that intensity and that contrast between the blue and those warm colors. I think that looks fine there. And then the last thing might be just a slight vignette. And I don't want to go too much. I want to go really round and really feathered 
and maybe a tiny bit of inner light because I think that inner light looks really good. It's pretty much centered uh, in the center of the photo, which is really where the sun is as well. And so I think that plays into that pretty nicely. There it is before and there it is after. And maybe I'll take that inner light down just a little bit and reduce the size or the intensity of that vignette just a little bit as well. I don't want to overdo it because it's kind of adding to what dehaze did and also what the negative luminance of the blue channel did. So I don't want to overdo it and but um, I do think it adds a little bit of extra look to that photo which I like so there it is before and there it is now it gives a little bit more brightness to that intersection and a little bit of almost uh, like I'm adding haze which I talked about in that recent video and that's the edit my friend so if you look at the before really intense a lot of vibrant colors and I think if you're not careful you can go over the top quickly and after I think the blues have real the changes especially in the blues have really helped those oranges and yellows stand out plus the minor adjustments I did with HSL I think have just made a huge impact on the photo so if you look at the before and after I feel like if you look at the sky I've maintained a lot of what I started with even though I've created a little bit more color contrast but I've still kept control over those clouds. My oranges didn't turn into that big blob. And of course, with Develop Raw, I was able to lift some shadows and things like that to bring a little bit more uh, visibility into the foreground. So one more time, my friends, before and after. And that's a demo of how I'm using HSL, especially on a really intense sunset. Of course, it's a great tool to use on any uh, photo, really. But controlling the saturation and the luminance of those individual color channels just gives you massive control over an image. And I think allows you to make something that stands out nicely without being over the top. That's how this one went, my friends. Thanks for watching. I hope it gives you some ideas in your own edits. And if you'd like to learn more things like this and get more tips with my weekly newsletter, there's a link down below. See you soon, my friends. Thanks for stopping by. You guys take care of yourselves. And until next time, adios.